What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to secure your backend API by implementing rate limiting with Redis. So right now, whenever a request is sent over to slash auth slash login, I'm running this attempt login middleware. And when we go check this out, we see that the first thing that it does is that it runs a query to our database and it even hashes a password. And both of those things are very computationally heavy. And the problem with that is that an attacker could potentially spam the login or maybe they're trying to brute force it to hack user accounts and it could affect our server's performance and even affect its uptime. So we want to implement a system that limits the amount of requests that you can send per minute. So we want to say that, for example, if you're trying to log in more than 10 times a minute, that's kind of suspicious and we just want to stop you before even running any of this um, logic right here. So if you saw my last video, um, I already imported Redis in my index.js file, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what you need to do so we can get started. So the first thing you need to do is you need to have Redis installed on your computer. For me, it was something as simple as sudo apt install Redis server, but it might be different depending on the operating system that you're using. So if you can run this command redis dash CLI and you get a prompt with no error, then everything's okay. If not, I suggest running redis dash server. And if that doesn't work, um, then try uh, stack overflow or something uh, along that, those lines. So I'm just going to run the server and get started. So um, I'm actually going to create a file called redis.js. And here is where we're going to create our Redis client. So here we just want to, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, you're going to want to do npm i io redis or yarn add. Yeah. So make sure you have that library installed. It's going to let us um, connect Redis with Node.js and it's a very reliable library and I recommend it. So you're going to want to do const redis with a capital R require io redis and it's a capital r because it's a class it returns as a class when we import this so uh, you know capital r and then we're going to want to instantiate this redis so we're going to do const redis clients is equal to new redis with an empty constructor an empty constructor means just use the default values okay and then we're going to do module.exports equals redis Client, just like that okay so now we're going to use this redis client to make queries over to our redis database so over here i'm just going to quickly uh get rid of this redis client in my index.js this is uh, having to do with my series uh, check it out check out the previous videos if you're interested here i'm just going to do um, const redis client is equal to require Redis, just like that. Okay, so now um, we're going to want to create a middleware that runs before the, um, the computationally heavy middleware. So we're going to want to stick it here. So I'm going to create a middleware in a separate file. So my controllers folder, I'm going to create one called rate limiter.js and it's going to, I'm going to do module.exports.rate limiter equals an asynchronous function that takes a request, a response, and a next uh, variable. If you don't know, when you, whenever you stick something to the module.exports object, it, um, it gets exported from your file automatically. So you can use it in different files. And since this is an Express.js middleware, it, um, it takes in the request, the response objects, and the next function, which you call whenever you uh, want to proceed to the next middleware in the line. So here, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the IP address of the user, and that's going to let us uniquely identify each request. So we're going to do const IP is equal to request dot connection dot remote address. And since I don't, I'm going to do some demonstrations and I don't want to expose my own IP address in this video, I'm just going to do dot slice and get the first three um, characters or 
just first two characters and yeah this is only for educational purposes but normally you wouldn't do the dot slice thing so now we're going to want to do const response is equal to await so now we're going to run a query in redis so we do redis clients and we have to import it so excuse me while i import it so redis client is equal to require like so and so we're going to want to run dot multi and this is basically going to let us do multiple queries or multiple commands to our redis client all at the same time basically and um these things return a promise that's why we're doing a wait so dot multi and then we're going to do dot increment so and we pass it in the key IP. Basically, it's going to go in a database. It's, um, and if you don't know how Redis works, it's like a database. Um, it's like a huge JSON object, if you want to think of it that way. It has a key and a value. So the key will be the IP address. And increment says, um, basically, if there's no key that's IP, just set the key to IP and the value to 1. And if it already exists, just set it to 2 or 3 or just increment it, basically. So we want to increment it, but we also want to set it to expire. So basically we want to say that this value or this key expires after a certain amount of time. And in our case, it will be 60 seconds, which is one minute. And what we're doing here is that we're incrementing it, but we're also setting it to expire. So the counter resets every minute. And in my case, I think I mentioned it. I want to make it so there's only allowed 10 10 uh, requests per minute and that's why every minute we're resetting the counter so when we do expire redis will automatically delete our our uh, our key object pair from the database and then we want to do dot exec which executes the um the multiple queries all together so it returns as a promise and i'm actually gonna console log the response and i'm gonna show you something so that's good for now. And now let's stick this over here in front of the attempt to login. So it's going to be the rate limiter goes in front of here as well as in front of here. Okay. So every time we send a request to slash all slash login, this will run. And of course we want to run next or else it will just stay, stay here forever. So I'm going to go here and run keys star and just ignore this uh, thing right here is from a previous video that's not important in this demonstration. So I'm going to run this. Okay. We got an error. Okay. And I almost forgot in the expire query, we have to pass in the key again. That's why I made a uh, IP uh, its own variable. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's just try again. Okay and i printed out the response and it's an array it's a two two dimensional array and this is because we have two queries so this first array down here is the response from this increment query and the second array is the response from the expire query check it out when we do it again the first one now has a value of two so we know that it's incrementing and this one right here that's returned from the expire just means everything went fine one is good everything went fine so you see how there's a null so this is null because that means there's no error so any error would be printed out right here and there's no errors so we're all good and right now in this moment we're only worried about this value which increments from two to three and so forth right we're only worried about that so we can actually do uh response we can uh, destructure that array i'm pretty sure that's going to work and that gives us the first array and so from now on we would just access the the first index which is the second item in that array so as you can see there and i'm actually going to do over here i'm going to go in redis and Okay, I guess remote address is like an IPv6 address. I thought it was IPv4, 
but it looks like it's IPv6. Okay. And that might be because I'm using Postman, but yeah, that's not really important. This is going to be an address either way, which will uniquely identify your users. But anyways, I'm just going to do get um, this right here, and it gives us the uh, number. So it's either it's going to increment. And then when you do TTL, so time to live, it gives you back the seconds left until it expires. So after 60 seconds, it will be deleted from our database. Okay, and that's that's cool and all. So let's start implementing more of the logic. So since we know that it gets deleted every 60 seconds, we don't all we have to worry about is if um, this value is more than 10. If it's more than 10, we know that there was more than 10 requests in the same minute. And that's when uh, we would stop this request right in its tracks. So in here, we would do um, if response one is greater than 10, we're going to request.json. And in my case, I'm sending back to the client's uh, a logged in property. You don't have to worry about that, but you can send back anything you want here. And here the status. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing on the front end where I'm sending back a status code. So you can do anything you want here, but I'm just sending back slow down. Try again in a minute. Okay. And then else uh, we send, we call next like that. So let's try to spam our database real quick. So I'm just going to send 10 requests in the same minute. And check down here, Postman, our response. OK, um, this is response.json, not request.json, I'm sorry. Um, since we're sending JSON as a response. OK, check it down here. We got um, this response just like that. And we go over, over here to our function that we're trying to protect. I'm just going to run a ran heavy task, right? So we know that if it ran or not. And when we go here, we see that the heavy task did not run. But if we go here and let's say delete. So if we delete um, those things from the database, it goes back to one or it resets. I just deleted um, this entry in the database. So we're back to zero and see it ran the heavy task. So this is really how you would do the whole rate limiting thing. And yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, once you get a little bit hang of Redis, you can do a lot more of Redis and you'll see later on if you stick around for the series, you'll see how we use Redis uh, later. And there's actually more that we can do to make this uh, more modular. So let's say that you uh, want to use the same logic, but you want to protect certain API endpoints more than others. So you want to be stricter in one place more than the other. So let's say here when, on the user sign up, I want to limit them to like five signups or two signups or three signups in the same minute. And in the logins, I'm a little more flexible. So that's something you can do really easily. So basically, um, you will want to make this a function that returns this function right here, like so. And then this one, you would make this middleware a function that takes in uh, two variables. So one would be limit, so like the time limit in seconds. So we can actually call this seconds limit. And this other one we can call um, limit mount. Yeah, there's probably better naming convention that you can use, but I'm just doing this right here. And so over here, instead of 60, you would do seconds limits. And over here, instead of 10, you would do limit amount. And just like that. And get rid of that. And what's going on here? Get rid of that too. Just like that. Okay, so this is a function that returns this function, but um, it gets passed into this asynchronous function, the arguments that we passed into the first one. 
and that's something that's called um i forgot what it's called i think it's called like scope or capture something like that but it's a feature javascript so then you would go in here and you would call it and it takes in the seconds so let's say for login uh 60 seconds like before and uh, limit them to 10 and then over here when they're registering i want to be more strict so 30 seconds and limit them to four like that and it will work just the same right so when we go um over 10 let me make sure i'm not getting an error okay so i'm just gonna spam it And there we did it 10 times in a minute and now it's saying slow down and when we do it again it's not running not um it's not running the computationally heavy task so yeah um i hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one